uh, the uh, to know exactly where what is one versus the other. Let me let me go there. What is what is we'll start with SEO. What is SEO? Well, SEO is basically search engine uh, optimization. We're um, so basically what you're looking at for um, SEO is how you rank on search engines. And what that is, is basically you're looking to get people um, to basically find you when they search you and to get them to come to your website. So basically like to rank high on Google, the visibility is outrageous. So if you're, you know, if you're a local plumber and you're the number one on a search engine, then of course, then that Google will show that you click on it and you go there. Social media is basically getting people to uh, follow you once they find you, kind of. So basically, like SEO is about being discovered and getting traffic through search engines. And social media is more about connecting, building relationships, um, getting traffic from, you know, just basically Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Uh, it really depends on the business where you want to be. I mean, it'd be great if you could be everywhere and be on every social media platform, but, um, unless you're a major company, you're not going to be able to have the manpower to, to basically accomplish that. You're going to have to pick and choose where your audience will most likely be. Um, you know, as far as social media. So like if you're, I think I guess like a plumber, you probably want to definitely be, I mean, Facebook, let's face it. I think it's like 2 billion people on Facebook. Um, you want to be there no matter what business you're in. It's just kind of the place to be. Um, and there's more, more eyes on you if you're, if you're there. So it's, um, it, it really just, you, it depends on the audience. It depends on the intent, um, you know, you basically got to look at the mindset of your potential visitors. Perfect. Um, that, you know, in a sense, what you just described to, to me, it's two forms of marketing, but one, I always, you know, discuss marketing is everything you do in advance and the sailing is what you do after you, they, people found out about you. So an example would be to me, if I hired somebody to do advertising for me, SEO marketing, um, any type of media, whether it's online or offline, their job, I would think, is to make the phone ring, uh, people to email you inquiries. I, example, I had one today. A person called and said they found me online, and I serviced the area, and they saw I put tags in there. So there's two things I do. Number one, I mentioned the, the area is called Wall Township, New Jersey. So in my social media stuff, I plug Wall, Tom's River, Brick, everywhere I'm at locally here. So that, that part of it gets it to as well, but also – any SEO stuff I would imagine is coming from people organically finding you. And I guess it can't, doesn't always have to be organic and I will get into what's one versus the other, but somehow they're finding out that I am a local business and they're emailing the website and going directly uh, to, to that. Yeah. I mean, with social media, it's like more about, um, you know, a lot about who these people are when they come based upon like where they come from. Cause if they, you know, but you really don't know what they're thinking, you know what I mean? But with search engine, like if they click on your link on search engine, they literally have had to search plumber. If you're a plumber to find you on the search engine, so you know exactly, uh, what they're thinking. Um, but you also, but you don't know a lot about who they are cause you don't have the social media platform to go out. So somebody, you know, adds you or follows you, you can look on their you can look at them and see, oh, this is uh, somebody who enjoys golf and blah, blah, blah. And, and you know what I mean? You kind of know a lot about them, but you don't know if they're really interested in your plumbing um, expertise, I guess. But when they click on you and come to your website through search engine, you know exactly, like, why would they click on a plumber if they weren't looking for a plumber? So it's, I mean, it's like they both go together. You can't really have one without the other. But you just got to understand that, um, like content that, um, like people on social media, you want to basically engage, um, you know, you want to have uh, like visuals 
are way better like visuals that are best on whole social media they they tend to capture the attention and in, in you know in the stream so you're basically in a i mean i guess you kind of be in a you're looking at somebody's wall and an ad pops up for something um it's like fast moving so you got what your ad has to be if you're running an ad or even if you're just posting from your page it has to be a headline that'll grab them um, so, but on search engine, they're already like, you almost want to think of, they're already looking for what you're doing if they click on you on search engine. So the, the website should have a lot of, um, material on their long form text, things that, you know, that pe people like, okay, to go to the plumber. Now tell me now that I'm at your website, why are you the best plumber and why should I choose you? Where social media is basically you're. You grab their attention and you might not even be anything they're looking for today, but they're like, wow, that was a, that was a great visual of, you know, whatever. And then you click on it and you're like, oh, there's a lot of interesting content on this page. I don't per se, per se need a plumber now, but I'm going to like this page because I just like the content they're putting out. You understand? So they both, they both are something everybody needs to take into account. You can't really have one without the other. The problem I find with social media or not so much social media, but people think that if they post once a week on Facebook about their company, that that's, um, good. That's actually, it's almost, I wouldn't say detrimental, but it, unless you're engaging, I mean, we're both big fans of Gary Vaynerchuk, but if you, if you listen to Gary, it's basically like a boxing match. If you, every day are leading with that, you know, was the right hook. You're hitting with the right hook. It's like, I'm a plumber. Here's what I do. I'm a plumber. Here's what I do. People are just going to zone you out. Right. But so you, what you gotta do is you have to provide content that, uh, that people want to basically hear. So you want to hit with, um, things that, I mean, I'm just as dumb as a me. I want to say they're dumb, but a meme, a cat video, a really interesting article, like if you're a computer guy and or a, you know, and there's a new, I don't know what you want to say, a uh, new technology out there and you post something about it. Or if you're in the cryptocurrency and you post like, Hey, you know, with, um, you know, there's a new, this, this new crypto is, is out. Here's a great article. Maybe you should read it and invest in it. Something like that. You'll read it. Um, and, but just content, you know what I mean? Like, um, value, you provide as much value as you can to the end user. And then, um, when they do need your service, they're going to remember you're the guy that basically gave them all that free content. Okay. Um, it makes total sense. It's sort of like, you know, giving them, giving them all the information on, on, um, wanting to buy your service, but a lot of information on why they should buy your service. Like you just said, sometimes they're, you get somebody, let's take, let's take a, a contractor, home builder, and somebody thinks, you know what, I've got to have a, uh, I want to put an addition on my house. We'll set that one up. And I can't do it right now because I just bought my house and I'm in debt up to my ass. And I got to build I but I want to build this room out for spring. It's the middle of winter. But I know, well, probably for summer. So they're going to start it around spring because you can't break ground when it's frozen. So they're they're thinking about where they can do something um, in the spring, break ground, build an addition onto their house. They need to get some ideas. But right now we're still sitting in February. So right now they're not really they're thinking about it and planning, but they're not really putting a lot of thought behind it because it's still f so far out to summertime. Um, but if they seek your message and go, you know what, I'm not going to do it today. But I'm going to do it in six weeks. I'm going to talk about doing it in six weeks. At least I have your information collectively. And I, I've seen that, like you talked about posts and blogs, like religiously six to seven days a week, I would put on a Facebook post, content pictures, content picture, content pictures every day. Same thing, jab, 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 like Gary talks about. Yep. And I'll be damned the entire, like I had no marketing budget my first year, like a lot of people do. They don't have much. It's so that I didn't have the resources to pull from to do it. I just said, you know what? I, I've got enough right now where I don't need to do it. I can... Let's try this and see if I can write content every day and content my, the consumer wants to read, not what I want to talk in technical speak, but consumer stuff. And, um, 
And because of that, I could put the content out there and they'll see something. And what I found is somebody sees a post I put on two months ago and they'll message me about that post and it's two months old. But if I hadn't put all that content out, all those hundreds and hundreds of posts every single year out there, I never would have, would never would have had it. So it's true. Like you, you have to be consistent, but not annoying consistent. Like you said, just consistent enough to put real information out there. That's relative to something you offer, a service you offer, a product you offer, but not like a hard sell, like buy my shit, buy my shit, none of that stuff. Just serious. Here's the, here's, here's what I do. Here's some information when, and if you're ready, here I am. And just being top of mind awareness or, or Toma, as they call it, you're being just there, but not so present that you're annoying the ever living hell out of them. You're just, you know, you're there. So if I was a new business to start in a challenging market, you know how I feel like down markets. I like challenging markets. I always have probably always will. It is easier, quicker to build a market in a, in a good market, but it doesn't have as much long-term residual. I feel if you really plan strategize correctly in a down market, you're going to do better in up market. So let's just say we're coming out of a down market right now. What would you suggest to somebody that's saying, okay, 2021 is a new year. We got some vaccines coming out. Numbers are starting to go down. Business can start growing. What would you suggest to a business owner? Let's say service-based businesses, because that's a lot of who our listeners are. What would you suggest to that contractor, builder, plumber, heating and air conditioning guy, carpet cleaner, restoration guy, no matter what? What would you suggest to those types of companies to come into 2021? We're already here, but I mean, they, let's just say for the summer, like the builder, I want to plan this stuff out. Well, basically the idea is like, um, you have to set yourself apart. Like I just listened uh, earlier today. I listened to the podcast that you just did, um, the standout, um, where he basically says is that he, he had a great example in there where, uh, when somebody go, somebody wants to put carpet in their house and they're going to go and they're going to Google carpet installer near me, it's going to list 10 carpet installers, but if you want to stand out, um, I mean, you can't listen, Facebook timeline moves so fast that you could post three to five times a day and no one's going to ever like, why I, this guy keeps on posting. I, I'm not going to do business with them. It's just never going to happen. Um, and Facebook's algorithm is based upon how much you post, how many likes, how many comments, so if you post once a week and you only have a thousand followers and then every week only like 50 people comment or, you know, like your stuff and you're only doing it once a week, the algorithm is going to start pushing you out of those people's timelines. So they're going to basically be like, okay, well, you know, Rob's content isn't being like, he's got a thousand people, but only 50 people like his stuff. So we're just going to show it to those 50 we're going to let the other, uh, 950, uh, not see his stuff. And, you know, so basically that's the way the algorithm works. So if you have to stand out, so like I tell, for instance, I mean, you know, I've, I made a living in the music business for almost 20 years, 15 years, let's say. And the one thing that is happening right now is a lot of my musician friends and bands that I work with that are musicians full time are taking a big hit because they can't even play. So a lot of them are they're finding other ways to build their their name so when they can start playing again, people will know who they are. So they're out there they're doing live streams. Um, they're posting content. They're writing songs. They have all the time in the world now to write because there's nothing going, you know, they can't play shows and, and they're building up a base by putting out so much content that at least every day, somebody is hearing from their band and their, their fan, if they have a, a, a decent fan base, the fan base, the fans eating it up cause they can't go see live shows. So right, they're right. basically the bands that are out there doing all these live streams are setting themselves apart 
from the bands who are just basically sitting back going, well, we can't play. So why practice? Why write? Right. Why put content out? I mean, if you're a cover band and you don't play original music, then, you know, do remakes of covers. If you're, you know, if they're, you're a, a plumber, um, or a, some type of service based business, find out how to put out content that the people who like own houses and own businesses that are going to be calling you as a plumber, things that you could put out that will let those people keep seeing you and set yourself up as the authority so that when business does pick back up, you're on the forefront of the minds of people that are out there. I'll tell you what I've, you know how many companies that I've helped build by just memes and cat videos, you know, like if, uh, you know, I've had some, um, nonprofits that will actually post positive memes or write content about, um, you know, just even anything like videos. They'll say like, Hey, we're going through a tough time, but we're going to get through this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the light at the end of the tunnel and all this other stuff were, you know, and it's positive, positive, positive messages on a daily, uh, and then if that happens, it's, it's consistency. And like, there's this one guy, I can't think of his name on the top of my head, but he has like over a million followers now on social media. But I read an article where he, it took him five years to get a hundred thousand followers by posting like maybe three times a week. And then he realized that the people that he followed that he looked up to some of these guys like Gary Vaynerchuk, who you can't go on Facebook without seeing two or three videos a day. And he started saying, all these people are posting like five times a day. I'm posting three times a week. So he decided to start forcing himself to post once or twice a day. And within a year, he had another 250,000 followers. So do the math. The more you post, the faster you get a following. So it's, it basically is like you have to, and it's hard. I mean, I get it. I've been in some, some of the, my clients have these really niche fields that they're in, whether it be, you know, basically all you do is plumbing, um, or, you know, something along that lines. If you train people on like one certain subject, it's really hard to come up with content when you're dealing with just one thing is how much can you write about plumbing, but you don't necessarily have to write about plumbing. You can write about like, if you're a contractor, uh, I would be posting like, even if you didn't build a house, but you saw a house built by somebody that was just absolutely gorgeous. You could always say like, um, what a great job this company did. Doesn't, you know, the, single out your competitors and, and prop them up. Maybe look at people across the country that are farther away. Like if you're in New York, you see a beautiful building that just got built in LA. You can be, somebody should let me build this in New York. Um, you know, just anything that will get people to, to put eyes on you. And, uh, I just think that a lot of people think that if they post once a day or once a week, that it's ever going to do anything. You might as well, I mean, it's maybe in five years, you might have a thousand people on that, like your Facebook page after, you know, in five years from posting once a week. But if it takes you a year to get a thousand followers and you post once a week, now triple that quadruple that, you know what I mean? Imagine how many more posts I have so many friends that say, Hey, did you see my Facebook post? Uh, I'll, I'll be like, no, like, what was the last Facebook post you saw for me? And then I'll, I'll say, Oh, I saw that one about, you know, whatever, uh, Bitcoin. And they'll be like, Oh my God, that was two weeks ago. And I was like, I know, I, I don't know. I just saw it like a week ago. And you know, but if you post, so people aren't going to get sick of you posting on Instagram and social media, they will. Like, I know a lot of people say, well, I get annoyed because like I'll go on Instagram and then it'll be the same person. will have 10 posts in a row. And it's almost the same thing. Well, that's because they're posting 10 things in a row within a matter of a minute. When I, when I say four to five times a week, 
Maybe you set up, okay, I got an 8 o'clock post, a 10 a.m. post, a 12 noon post, a 2 p.m. post, and a 6 p.m. post. Um, it, it, it really is about consistency, and it's a lot of work, but how, how well do you want to, I mean, do you want to make it? Do you want to make up, you want to be a millionaire, or do you want to be, just get by? If you just want to get by, you're looking to make, you know, minimum wage, or you're looking to just be able to pay your bills and live easy, then, then once a day may be all you need to do, but if, you're trying to grow your construction business so that you can start building, buying property and putting townhouses up yourself and become a real estate mogul, mogul, you know, like then social media is the fastest way to grow to grow a following. So I, I just see a lot of people making those mistakes and the biggest mistake I've seen. And I mean, this of course I'm a marketer, so that's, you know, people are going to be like, oh, that's because you probably lost a bunch of clients, but the worst thing. And so when, when the lockdown happened with coronavirus back in March, I had five clients immediately cancel all their marketing. Three of those five are out of business. They're not okay. coming back because they made the fatal mistake of basically taking themselves away, taking basically closing the curtain so there's no eyes on them anymore. It's like they went into a closet and waited for the pandemic to be over, and then they're going to come out and start telling people about them. That, yeah, well, they're just now you've got 50 or 100 people in line ahead of them because they didn't stop. Yeah. They just took the shuttle and kept on pushing. To me, this sort of makes uh, a, a tiny of analogy. If I look at a dartboard, and obviously on a dartboard you have different numbers and then the target in the middle, You know, obviously you want to hit a bunch of arrows to the – to the target you want to hit the darts to the target but it's not realistic unless you're really really good and skilled you can you can bam 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 just keep throwing them throwing the darts at the target but if, at least if you throw some darts and you start filling up the board wouldn't it be better to at least be present out there like you just said to at least consistently have your name out there um i didn't pull back any of my marketing just the, for example, not, not one penny. In fact, I think I might've plowed more money into this past year just because I know people and I know businesses have that fear, that inherent fear that the sky is falling, that the world is falling apart. Now, obviously COVID is something most of us alive have never experienced anything like this with a lockdown or, or um, something that's really put this kind of hurt on it. We all thought in the beginning it was going to be gone in four to six weeks. Nobody realized we're almost a year into this thing and yeah. we're lightening up a little bit, but we're still, we're still in it. That's the unrealistic thing. It'll be gone. It'll be gone. It'll be gone. Well, it wasn't. So you can't worry about what you can't control. All right. You have to worry about what you can control. You have to think about what you can control. What you can control is taking and being consistent with your uh, your marketing. John talked about this the other day on the podcast about being consistent over and over and over again. And I've heard this and I, I talked about it in my book. You know, your marketing needs to be consistent. Don't worry about things behind you. We had a presidential change. Don't worry about it. You had a governor change. Don't worry about it. You had uh, some snow on the ground. Don't worry about it. Just keep plowing forward. Work with what you have in front of you and with you to keep on going. Stopping only puts you behind everybody else. And God forbid you got somebody like me out there that just says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to plow forward. Well, let's say there's 10 of me in the same market. And three of us decided one day, you know what? We're just going to, we're just going to put the curtain across. Like you said, we're going to lock the door. We're going to turn off the lights. Now all 10 of us are going to be in ahead of you going into this year. So making a deadly and it is, it's, you're, you're understating it. It's a deadly mistake. Business today is online, okay? 20% of the business development, I don't care, and I will debate this with anybody, 20% of it's offline, 80% of it's online. It's just the reality. If you haven't accepted that yet, you're fooling yourself. You're kidding yourself, and you're jeopardizing your livelihood by thinking that you can do business like you used to do it offline, that's 20% of the business, of which 10% are previous customers, if you do a decent job on your rate of attrition and keep it low so people are not going out the door to your competitor. So why would you really, at the end of the day, leverage with 10% instead of putting the 80% into your online presence? If you let it go, you let it go. When you stop marketing offline, people start going elsewhere. When you stop marketing online, 
people just don't go elsewhere. They run to the other companies because they're visible. They're out there. They're in front of it. Yeah. I always, I always, uh, it's funny. I heard a quote, so it's not my quote, but I saw it on, um, somebody used, I can't remember who it was, but it was like such a great quote. Somebody said something. And then, uh, the, the quote was, um, if I didn't see it on my phone, it didn't happen. Oh, geez. Good quote. <laughs> that's a really good quote. And that's uh, it was so funny. Cause well, I used to always tell, uh, I don't really say it. There's cause billboards are kind of, I wouldn't say they're a thing of the past, but they're not anywhere where they used to be. But I remember when I first, like 10 years ago, I remember clients would come to me and say, Hey, we're thinking about a billboard. And I was like, okay, well, what, what, how much is your budget? Well, my budget's only $500 a month. I was like, well, that'll, that's what a billboard, you know, cost right about now, you know? And, um, and I, I was like, why explain to me why you think a billboard is, is, you know, worth spending money on. They're like, well, people drive by it on their way into and from work. And especially if you're on a major highway. And I was like, people aren't even looking at the road anymore, let alone a billboard. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they're it, looking it at your awesome. ad on the Facebook account. They're looking at your ad on 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 uh, YouTube. They're they're not looking at that. They're, you're you're right. We have the craziest drivers in history because we're all looking at social media. So that just proves the point even more that eighty yeah. percent of people are are searching social media and SEO stuff while they're driving. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially like. I mean, next time you're driving, just all you got to do is really is like the next time you're in a car and you're not driving, don't do this if you're driving. But if you're a passenger in a car, look at every car and you will notice that the driver is probably, um, they might be looking at the road, but they're actually looking at the road. They're not going to take their eyes off the road to look at a billboard. They're going to take their eyes off the road to see who just texted them, who just called them. But everybody else in the car's head will be down. Because they are on their phone. That is exactly how people pass their time. Go to a, go to, you know, any restaurant. Uh, if they're having a conversation, uh, most likely they're all, their phones are there. Like when was the last time I always try like a a bunch of me and my buddies go out somewhere. I'll do this thing where we're like, uh, and I'm not, I didn't invent this. It's I've read about this, a bunch of stuff. We're like, well, I'll take our phones and put them face down in front of us and the first one that picks up their phone pays the bill mm, yep. so that we actually have, you know, a conversation, you know, a real, real conversation. But, uh, but, but what you were saying earlier actually hits home is like, if, if you were focused on like, and I don't understand you, you just don't discount politics or all that kind of stuff. Like if you, it is good to know what's going on, But if you think that your life is going to change drastically, now it will change, but it's happened for hundreds of years. A Democrat has, you know, the office and a Republican and the Democrats might have the house and the Senate and all this. That has happened for hundreds of years. What I'm saying is if you put, which a lot of people do because the media no longer informs, they incite. And if you get obsessed with that, or if you think that because Donald Trump is no longer president and Joe Biden is that your business is going to take a hit, it probably will because that's your mindset. But if you say, I don't care who's in office, I don't care who's the governor of my state. Um, I mean, I'm in Pennsylvania, probably one of the most unpopular governors in the country. I mean, he's kind of been way over the top and making blanket statements. There could be a County that only had 20 people die and they're at their same rules of light of them that apply to counties that have 2000 people die. I mean, it just, it, none of it makes sense, but I don't sit at home and go and, and think about that that much. If I have a, if I'm bored or like if I'm working on a project and I get no one one and I'm just kind of like, you know, burn out. I might go on Facebook or I might watch some YouTube videos to see anything that's happened in, in either like maybe politics. I mean, I've kind of been getting into cryptocurrency and investing and stuff like that, trying to teach myself. So I don't, um, first stock I bought went to like half price in about a week. So I evidently proved that I'm not good at it. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. But if you really, if you think that something external is going to change the velocity of your business or your business plan, it's going to, because it's more in your head than it is out there in, in the political sphere, I guess you want to call it sphere. Um, I think it was Wayne Dyer that said one time, like there was a story where he told where like some guy was in his house, the power went out and he dropped his keys and he couldn't find his keys. And he was on the floor feeling around. He couldn't find his keys. And he looked up and saw that across the street, there was a street light. So he went outside of his house and across the street and started looking around underneath the street light. And his neighbor came out and was like, Hey, what are you looking for? He's like, I lost my keys. So the neighbor's there on the ground with them. They're feeling around and stuff like that. And the neighbor's like, so where did you drop them? Do you remember the last place you had them? He's like, yeah, the last place I had them was in the house. And he was like, then why are we out here on the street like when you dropped your keys in your house? And he's like, because it was well lit. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. You're trying to fix something that's on the inside, and but you're looking to an external source to either and it's easy to blame i mean when your business goes down do you say my business just dropped 20 percent this year um and if you say like my friends will say this well you know corona really put a hurting on my business like my business dropped 50 percent, and i'm like that's true but now what yeah like what is it what does it prove to sit around and go well covid did this or covid did that yeah i know it did it to everybody So now what, like you have to, you have to figure a way to make money. No business goes out of business because of lack of resources. Businesses only go out of business due to lack of resourcefulness. That's true. That is, that is so true. You know, uh, I couldn't have said that better myself, Rob, we are at the 30 minute threshold, man. That went fast, dude. It did. Uh, Why don't you jump on the. Anything, whether it's just even a phone call to catch up, it seems like two hours later, we're still talking business. So we did it two hours and some odd minutes the last one. We had to condense it down. But we're going to talk about some other stuff. Really, the big thing today was having the separation and, and knowing when you can't stop either thing, you've got to make sure you put all your bases, even if you're not spending a boatload of money on each SEO or uh, social media marketing, you've got to spend money on both. Figure yeah. out a budget, talk to your professional, reach out to Rob here. It's very simple. I'm going to put his information here on the podcast uh, page and all the information, everything we send it out to, all the different platforms. You can reach out to him or you can reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with Rob. And Rob and I actually got some uh, things coming down the pike. We got another podcast that's going to be, uh, I won't get too far into it yet, but it, it's it's a pretty cool freaking idea. So, um, and it's I think it's going to help change some things, especially coming out of what we are uh, dealing with right now and getting your business back in motion. But the story, moral of the story here is don't stop. Whatever you're going to do, make sure you spend it. And if you can't spend as much on any of it, fine. Bring your budget down to what's manageable, what you can get some results with, you know, but still continue to do it. Don't shut it off. Um, you know, it's the great best analogy I can think of is organic and paid. If you, something's organic, it's still there tomorrow as long as you maintain it. If it's paid and it's pay-per-click, it's gone the second you shut it off forever. They're not gonna find you because if you have nothing organic backing you up, the pay-per-click doesn't mean anything. It's gone once you shut off. I do both and I get it. And you can't shut it off. If you're gonna shut it off, then you're putting the curtain over your windows, then you're locking up the doors and you're turning off the lights and you're saying, I give up. But the key word is you are giving up. Your business is not giving up on you. Don't give up on it. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today on another episode of Social Service so Without Excuses, <laughs> talking about social media and SEO. And what is the difference between the two, Rob? Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, before we even get off this, how can they contact you? Um, let our listeners know. Um, basically, depend. Like, I uh, probably the best place would probably just be. Um, and I don't really like the name of the company, but I started it like 20 years ago before I even um, really got into marketing. I just wanted to have a company name and I thought it sounded really professional to just call myself Hampton Consulting. Okay. Um, so it's hamptonconsulting.net. 
is like the site I've had forever. But um, uh, my new site, basically, I have a site called SEO on Fire, just dedicated to SEO because that's kind of where that's my thing. I I, you know, I do social media marketing, but it's I don't really have a passion for it. I really don't like. I I have a passion for the search engine stuff because you can see. Well, I just I like when I I Google somebody or they. Google themselves and they see that they went from page three to number three on page one. Yeah. I just like helping people. So when somebody's business grows because of something I did, you know, it's kind of gratifying. So that's a win brother. That's a win. All right, guys have a good evening. Enjoy it. And we'll see you on the, uh, the next podcast. Thanks so much. Enjoy.